Hello all, so welcome to our third lecture on image processing and computer vision. So in this lecture we will be discussing edge detection and as I said in our very first lecture that we will be covering the edge detection in a separate lecture. So here we will particularly focus on the most beautiful theorem in computer vision and most widely used theorem. Not theorem but I can say the paper which was published by John Kenny in 1986 and it was based on the edge detection and it is the most robust algorithm. Nowadays we are using some deep learning and machine learning methods for better edge detection but this is uh, until now is quite robust. So let's begin. So the outline is simple we can say that we will discuss briefly about edge filters first and then we will be developing our idea to go to Kenny edge detector. So basically we have seen uh, filters like Gaussian filter then average filter right so all those filters were low pass filters and we already know what are low pass filters they pass low frequencies and block high frequency but the edge filter will be so edge filters will pass high frequency and block low frequency and I discussed in a very detail in last lecture that what are high frequency and low frequency in images right so abrupt changes intensities are high frequencies so edge filters will pass those things so edge filter will detect those changes abrupt changes in intensity and that's why they give us the edges that is what we want right so let me just complete the statement that will pass high frequency and block low frequency that's it and we'll be uh, discussing can edge detection in thorough detail so starting from a basic image that let's say this is our image and I'm just explaining for this particular scan line so this is called one scan line of the entire image so if we'll plot this intensity that is you can see this is some gray value right I am not uh, taking any colored image just for explanation purpose but we can take there will be three, di three dimension for red, green and blue for all the three vectors but uh, coming back to this gray image that is black and white image you can see that the intensity is somewhat gray and then again coming black so from here the intensity will fall so you can see our curve is somewhat like this and when this black region will come it will fall suddenly right there are some variations due to noise or any other factors and you can see that the texture is somewhat white as well in between right and again after this we are getting the same gray texture so again our intensity will rise and again the same thing will follow like this now if someone asks to find the edge by seeing we can say that similar directly that this would be the edge of the image right but how machine will ask what machine will answer so if we'll ask machine to find edge then what it will do is that it will change it will uh, detect the changes in the intensity and the, that is the peak right where the change is occurring and the most significant change will be the edge and it is nothing but in mathematics it is differentiation and that how much change is occurring a finite differentiation please note that in differentiation it's like dx so dx is very very small element infinitesimally small element we are taking for differentiation and integration this is the concept of differentiation that we are taking a very small amount of x value change and we term that as our dx so please note this thing and because of this we will get you can see here that we are getting some peak because here our intensity is drastically changing it's falling right then again it's going to some higher value and the things goes on like this so here we can say that this should be the edge here it will be the edge and you can see here means this thing and then here there is an abrupt change so we can say that this thing should be the edge so this is the basic idea behind detecting the edge so edges are nothing but the abrupt changes in intensity values now a good edge detector we will be discussing the Kenny edge detector which is good edge detector until now so basically the good edge detector should have certain properties like 
let's say this is our true edge then there should be if this true edge is should it should be detected by our algorithm then it should not be detected like this or like this or like this it should be detect detected like this only like a true edge so this case is poor localization that is it is not able to localize where the edge is then because we know that images are not perfectly noise free there are some noises in there we will see right so because of those noises there might be possibility that those noises are considered as edge so that's why we are getting this poor robustness to noises and there might be possibility that we can say that there are even though in our image there is only single edge but we will say that there are more than one edges so we can say multiple responses there too many responses so all this should not be there for a perfect or we can say good local edge detection algorithm not local but good edge detection algorithm pardon so filter should detect edges perfectly then edges must be localized so perfectly means there should be robustness to the noise they should be localized and there should be one response per edge if we are having multiple edges then detecting multiple edges will be okay but if there is a single edge and we are detecting more than one edges for that particular one edge only that's not good so we will see how kenny is giving us this three properties as we will discuss kenny so coming back to our topic that edge so i am again considering a simple image it is white in this area you can see then black and then again white and you can see that this image is somewhat blurred you can see this area and this so actually the entire image is somewhat blurred blurred means nothing but smooth so our image is being smoothened first why because if we are having so note that it's a smooth version if we are having a very sharp image like this area is black white then there is an abrupt change from white to black suddenly and then again white then what will happen is that our intensity value will be like white then sudden black then sudden white and this function is not differentiable because we know that in our function if there are corners sharp corners then our function is not differentiable and the basic idea that we developed was that in order to find edges we need to have the function which is differentiable and in order to have this we smooth it and you can see there is a smooth change from high intensity to low intensity and again from low to high and if we will differentiate this or we can say we will take first derivative of this and what we will get is here intensity is like going from high to low that's why our change is from high to low and here from low to high for this corresponding region so you can say that edges corresponds to the extremum of derivatives that is which are the ex maxima and minima right this are the edges and this is the basic idea behind uh, finding the edge for any computer vision algorithm now you can apply any smoothing it's not necessary that you have to apply gaussian smoothing but gaussian is good as compared to box right and provided we are uh, performing only linear filtering so here median filtering you can apply but the kenny is having one assumption we'll see that in kenny edge detection it is good to apply like kenny edge detection is only valid for linear filtering so if we apply median filtering it won't work because kenny is having some assumption and based on those assumption it is very good or good Okay, we will see all this thing but i am just giving the glimpse of the things that we are going to discuss what if we don't smooth so you might ask that what will happen then let's say this is our noisy input image so this will be the noise you can see here that this is the noise then there is an abrupt change in intensity and then again the noise so if you will differentiate this because as i said that differentiation will detect a minute like a infinitesimally small change in intensity value and here you can see there is a change significant change that we can even see with our eyes due to noise and that's why we are getting this huge weird looking 
edges and now if I'll ask where is the edge can you detect because there are so many edges and in actual picture there is only one edge and that's why there is a need of smoothing so you can consider this as an one of the application of Gaussian smoothing or average filtering or anything so application of smoothing or blurring that we discussed in our first lecture now you can have you can say that uh, I, I said that we can find the edge using first derivative but is it possible with second derivative yes of course like again this is an image you can see this is the intensity value of one single line of the image scan line so it is low then high then again low first derivative will be like this and if you will take again this derivative then it will be like this so in order to detect edges we have to just find the zero crossings that's it so everywhere zero crossing here as well zero crossings so we'll see in Laplacian operator that because we know Laplacian some of you might know if you don't know that Laplacian is nothing but second derivative so we'll see what is Laplacian or but it, I'm just introducing the notion of second derivative that if someone said to detect edges you can detect either by just first derivative or you can go for second derivative as well so no harms so it's just nothing but just be able to detect the zero crossings and we'll find the edges now coming back to our first derivative that now convolution I will always try to emphasize on this term convolution because it is very much useful throughout this entire course so we'll uh, use like convolution to differentiate the image now recall our basic mathematics that this is the definition of differentiation or derivative or you can say first principle for derivative and since we know that images as we discussed that it is a function of x and y so uh, here it should be x it's a typo error sorry so if I differentiate with respect to x then x should be changing and y should be constant it's a partial derivative because x f is a function which is a function of both x and y and divided by epsilon so epsilon is very small quantity and the same thing we can apply for y so here you can see the y is changing and epsilon tending to 0 right this is very small quantity epsilon tending to 0 now this is for continuous continuous functions but as I said in our previous lecture that images are discrete and that's why we'll not use this continuous definition of first derivative but rather we'll use some approximated version so we'll use some finite difference approximation and what is that so as I said you can see here it's an approximation not the actual symbol so since images are discrete because we know that they are represented as pixel pixel 1 pixel 2 pixel 3 and so on so there won't be any half pixel in between right so this won't be there if this is 1 this is 2 there should not be something in between it should be discrete and that's why we just use x plus 1 and x while we are differentiating with respect to x and similarly when we differentiate with respect to y we will be having this and denominator we should be having x plus 1 minus x of course so xx will cancel and we are just having 1 and the same thing is valid for this term and because of this it is called finite difference approximation it is not exact thing you can approximate using other things as well but this is one of the way to approximate and so if I approximate this then what are the kernels let's see this so first let me just erase all this thing now let me just take the pen yeah so what are the corresponding kernels based on this derivative because as I said the topic is image derivative using convolution so how convolution is playing role like until now I explained this slide yeah, like since couple of minutes and there is no role of convolution but you will see that this is nothing but simply this thing 1 minus 1 right in x direction and the same thing sorry I need to erase it again and this is nothing but 
वन माइनस वन एंड और माइनस वन वन यू कैन यूज दिस एज वेल राइट सो वेन टू यूज वन माइनस वन एंड वेन टू यूज माइनस वन वन इट्स वेरी क्लियर वेन वी हैव टू वी आर परफॉर्मिंग कन्वोल्यूशन विल बी यूजिंग वन माइनस वन एंड फॉर को रिलेशन विल बी यूजिंग माइनस वन वन सो बेसिकली वेन दिस इज अवर इमेज सो वील पुट दिस कर्नल इन हियर एंड वील जस्ट कन्वॉल्व एज वी डिड इन अवर फिल्टरिंग लेक्चर बट यू कैन सी दैट लाइक जस्ट यूजिंग दिस कर्नल विथ टू एलिमेंट्स इट्स नॉट गुड वाई बिकॉज we know that we'll always replace the center pixel by the value that we get after convolution that is just linear combination by multiplying the corresponding things and here the center pixel is in between the two and it is not possible in the image as i said there should be discrete things like first pixel then second pixel there is not there is nothing like half pixel and that's why rather than using this thing we use 1 0 minus 1 that is 3 3 cross 3 or 1 cross 3 we'll see for 2d case this is just for 1d that's why we are having just 1 minus 1 or 1 0 minus 1 but we'll extend this concept for 2d thing as well because images are 2d this is just for explanation now the same thing for y derivative you can either use 1 minus 1 or you can either use minus 1 1 i hope things are visible or let me just erase it Why it's not erasing? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know why I'm not able to erase anything. Okay, moment. Yeah. Good. So, sorry for the delay. So you can see, either you can use use this or this. I'm not getting why it is. coming back again okay anyways so finally the edge detection based on just first derivative is nothing but given an image the single scan line of our image you can call it a signal as well doesn't matter this is our gaussian kernel yeah and i hope you all are familiar with the shape very famous shape bell curve because why we need this because we have to first smooth our image as i said so we are firstly convolving our image with gaussian kernel in order to just smooth our image so you can see this is our smoothed version of our original image you can see this image is our original image and here it is the smooth version you can see there is no noise like this here and after that we are just differentiating it so if you will differentiate this we will get this peak over here because there is a change in intensity and we know that this point is nothing but corresponding to this 1000 you can say that it is our edge right so the complete strategy we developed is nothing but just smooth the image and take differentiation and we are ready to go for our edge detection now there is something that we can do to this algorithm what we can make it more efficient how let's see again we are having the same image but as i said i am always emphasizing on this convolution that convolution is associative so in previous this thing what we did is this thing that is first we convolved our image with gaussian kernel and then we differentiated but rather than this what if we can do this thing like either first do differentiation of gaussian and then convolve right or you can do this as well like first differentiate our image but this is not good because we know that there is noise present and we can't do this thing because it will amplify all our edges as well and that's why we won't use this so it's better to use this and this is because thanks to the associative property of convolution and indirectly thanks to the convolution it's my favorite operator so firstly what we'll do is we'll first differentiate our gaussian so gaussian is something like this and we first differentiate it so this is the differentiated version of gaussian so you can see from previous image if you will differentiate this you will get this this is nothing but you can plot online in any tool just uh, plot and see that this is our differentiation of gaussian and 
in short it can be written as this differentiation of gaussian or derivative of gaussian and it is more efficient as i said and after that we will convolve it with our original image and if we will do this then we will get this thing and again we are getting the peak over here and which is nothing but our edge that we know that this is our edge there is a change in intensity so moving towards 2d thing now so far we discussed just a single scan line this this is the intensity or the signal graph of one single scan line of our image right let me just recall it that what i mean by this single scan line so we are just considering this single scan line intensity profile but let's go quickly that now we know that our images are 2d and in order to have that thing like in order to detect edges for the entire image what we can do is that we can have different kernels like this so this is you can see 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 and 1 minus 1 so it is like horizontal thing difference in x and it will give edges which are vertical mind it i discussed this thing in very first lecture that the kernel which is having 1 minus 1 is difference in x direction horizontal direction will detect our vertical edges right so and similarly this you can see this has difference in vertical direction so it will detect edges in horizontal direction so detect edges in horizontal direction but the difference is in vertical direction please mind this difference it is inverse thing so this was given by previt so it's called previt filter and the same thing was given by Sobel but here the weightage is just 2 that's it the same thing here 1 minus 1 so same thing here 1 minus 1 but in between the weightage is given more similarly 1 minus 1 but here the weightage is 2 2 that's it and 1 minus 1 and one other filter is there like it is detecting edges as you can guess in diagonal direction you can see here it was given by Robert. So you can see that there is a lot of computation work going on like we have to every time given an image like let's see I have given any random image and if someone says that just find the edges then what we can do we have to apply private filter in horizontal direction or private filter in vertical direction or you can use Sobel as well and then it might be possible that edges are like in any random image edges are everywhere like in in the image we can't say that edges will be only in horizontal direction or vertical direction right it can be diagonally as well anything so every time we have to apply all the filters one by one isn't it so tedious yes of course and that's why we'll use something else and that is if some of you can guess it's nothing but so it's just the animation that i entered that we need to check edges in all direction isn't it no there is gradient which can help us because we know that let's say this is our image so it's just a intensity change from black to white as you can see so here the gradient direction will be perpendicular to the edge right in just x direction this is a gradient so first let me start but first things first so gradient is defined as of any function f is just take the functions derivative with respect to x and then with respect to y and this is nothing but gradient and gradient definition is the direction of most significant change in the intensity and this is nothing but edge that we want but it's not like we have to just have horizontal edge or vertical edge so we don't have to convolve this, this Sobel filter or private filter every time to get edges in either horizontal direction and vertical direction and diagonal direction and so on so that's it that's not a good approach so rather what you can do is you can see here the edges in horizontal direction here the edges in this vertical direction you can see now if image something like this so you can see the uh, intensity is changing diagonally so uh, it will be having both the components of the gradient that is x component and y component so the resultant will be this something like this and this is some direction which can be given by this thing because theta is nothing but tan inverse del f by del y divided by 
del f by del x and if we want to find magnitude then we can also do this by simply using the magnitude square and taking the under root so image gradient is very much useful in finding the edges so what can you did is the same thing that he found the gradient so firstly he converted with like gaussian so we will see what can he did can he used image gradient as of now just stick to this point so what can he did is first of all as i said previous start in the starting of this lecture that there are some assumption that he made that in kenny as detection 1986 paper he said that the filtering that we are doing that is gaussian filtering and it is linear we know that only non linear filtering that we discussed is median filter so you can't use median filter on the image and use this approach of differentiation to get this edges it won't work it will give some output but it won't be perfect it won't detect edges there will be some error you can try it in python and we will see all this thing by code as well firstly let's focus on theory and if when we are having a good amount of theory we will be starting with code as well and i'll be using totally python so coming back to a point that only linear filtering is applied and the other assumption is that the noise in the image because as we said images are always noisy so noise should be iids that is independent and identically distributed and it is fairly good assumption because everything in mathematics in noise especially if you have communication background then noise is always assumed to be iid so that we can have computational ease so that's not like uh, i'm not going to deep into this iid and those stuff okay there are separate lectures for that so if you want then i can make for you just comment and i'll make it so the algorithm says that firstly find the derivative of the gaussian because it saves our operation like let me just go back again if you can recall that here firstly we'll take derivative of the gaussian and then we'll convolve rather than doing this that first we are convolving and then creating the derivative of entire thing yeah because it is easy it saves our operation one operation is saved here just three operation here we are having four operations so it is good so firstly can you is doing in step 1 that find the derivative of gaussian or we can say dog then find the gradient we just saw what is gradient so it's magnitude as well as its direction then this two are very important step that non maximum suppression that is suppress the pixels which are not maximum okay i'm just briefing it right now we'll see in thorough detail in just a minute and then hysteresis or we can say thresholding now we'll see all this thing in very next slide but the important note here is that we are using smoothing right some of some kind of smoothing we are using and we are having gaussian kernel so it has some sigma value that is variance or standard deviation so more smoothing smoothing is nothing but blurring so more blurring can lead what can lead to deteriorate our image structure because our original image if it will be more blurred higher the sigma is more it will be blurred so if we are having more blur then our original image structure will be changing and then our algorithm that is our edge detection algorithm won't be able to perfectly localize where the edge is so there is always a trade off between edge detection and localization because of this more smoothing so how much amount we have to smooth that is what value of sigma that we have to choose if you have noticed in one of my previous images here the sigma was 50 right so i didn't emphasize that thing over here but we will see that what is the effect of the sigma and we saw this right i will show you the example in this lecture or in the very next lecture so there is some trade off always between this detection and localization now you can see the kenny edge detection with example so this is our original image then we are just computing gradient and you can see we are getting very good edges but the only drawback is that we are getting thick edges because the edge should be like we can say that thick edges means that there are more than one pixels in this thick edge on this thick edge right and edge should be consisting of 
only single pixel that is it should be thin and for that purpose only our non maximum suppression is used which was our step number 3 here and then we will see what is this in thorough detail and then even there is something missing here okay and what is missing it's like there are many discontinuities and in order to fulfill this discontinuities we will be using thresholding so that we can get continuous thing right now let's have a detailed explanation of non maximum suppression so please pay attention it is very important thing so we'll check if the pixel is a local maximum in the direction of the gradient so it is a basic principle behind non maximum suppression and as i already said i'm repeating that suppress the pixel which is not a maximum so why it is needed first of all because you can see here that the edge is thick and if you will zoom here then you can see this thick line and if i will ask where is the edge because there are so many pixels white pixels here and we want just a thin line a single pixel line and for that we use non maximum suppression so non maximum suppression is that again the same thing that is which is the thick line but now what we are doing is that we are considering one pixel single pixel over here and we are computing its gradient direction yeah so this should be the direction of its gradient so we will go along its gradient direction so you can see let's say this is our pixel this q this is corresponding here right so we will go along its gradient direction here or here both direction and we will find the pixels somewhere else in this direction so as i said here i wrote it that there might be a need to interpolate between two pixels and here it is the need because we have to interpolate between two pixels you can see here p and r so, so we will check if this pixel that we are getting on this gradient direction is maximum or not or local maximum to be precise and if it is not just simply replace it by black value that is make it black so that we can get this image as more thinner thinner and thinner because we will see that those pixels which are not maximum or local maximum will suppress them and we will replace it by black pixel so the region will gradually become black and at the end what we will get is our thin line that we want and this is the basic concept behind non maximum suppression i hope i am making sense and i cleared everything now the result you can see that here it was thick but now it's really good as compared to before but still as i said there is something missing this i already explained but again i am asking that what is missing the discontinuities so any guesses as i already said there are discontinuities in the image and in order to like avoid this discontinuities will be using something called thresholding and to be precise hysteresis thresholding so why it is named hysteresis so basically we are using two thresholds first is high threshold and the second is low threshold so the main idea is that why it is called hysteresis as i already said use high threshold to start edge curves and low threshold to continue them so what is this i'll explain this very important thing the central idea is that if the gradient at pixel so if at any pixel is greater than this high threshold so this is the gradient magnitude at some pixel so x axis is nothing but our pixel so if at some pixel if our gradient magnitude this is our y axis here is greater than this threshold that we set high this some value so if it is greater than it is this region right this point this thing this thing all this point which are above this threshold high then that is the edge pixel and don't suppress it but if the gradient at pixel is less than low that is below the, this region that i highlighted then it's not an edge pixel and simply suppress it we don't want it but what about the gradient at pixel with this thing that is greater than low and less than high which is in this region gradient 
what I mean by gradient at pixel means magnitude of gradient yeah so gradient magnitude the which I already wrote it here but I'm just writing it here that is magnitude of gradient it's just a brief writing in the slides that's it so it is very important that if gradient at pixel is bit in between this that what we can do is that the pixel is an edge pixel if and only if this is if and only if connected to an edge pixel directly or via other pixels between low and high what does it mean let me just first erase all the stuff and then explain so the thing is that let's say it didn't got erased every time why it is happening okay sorry mm. I think yeah okay it will work now if our pixel is somewhere here right it is between high and low you can see in our this region then we have to check whether it is connected to the edge pixel because we know that anything about this threshold high is our edge pixels so you can see it is connected directly or you can say via some other pixels to this edge pixels so we can say that this pixel is an edge pixel and consider it as x pixel so what we will do is that we will continue them as our edge curves so using this hysteresis you, I can say that now we will get the continuation that discontinuous that we are getting is now getting continuous similarly if the pixel is somewhere here so you can see that it is not going to this level or above high level through any other pixel because it is not connected to any other pixel so that's why this pixel even though it is between high and low it will be considered as in low region and it will be considered as not an edge so this is how we do thresholding and to be precise hysteresis thresholding by using two thresholds and this is very important concept and after performing all the things like firstly we are calculating gradient first step is calculating gradient then we are calculating sorry first step was let's let me go here that first step was finding the derivative of Gaussian so first step was let me just write that find derivative of Gaussian then we what we'll do is again I'm going sorry for this back and forth so find the gradient magnitude direction so we'll find the gradient its magnitude and direction then third will be our non max suppression very important step and fourth is our thresholding or we can say hysteresis thresholding so after performing all this thing on this original image you can see how precise we are getting the edges right somewhere over here there are some discontinuities because it's not like the skin color and the background both are getting little bit mixed that's why we are getting here the discontinuity but apart from that everything is perfect and this is how can a detection work now as I said I introduce that we can also use second derivative for edge detection and after that I introduce a notion just I introduce a term of Laplace so in very next lecture we'll be starting with what is Laplace and we'll see how Laplacian can also be used it is second derivative can also be used to find edges and we'll see what are the results that we are getting and then we'll move to our next topic which is nothing but interest point detection so stay tuned thank you i hope you like the video